Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray, joined this week by reporter Emily Hoven, political columnist with the San Francisco Chronicle. Emily, always good to see you again. So the governor had a couple of thousand bills in front of him. Got to go through all of these. Um, the important ones he did sign, in your opinion, and obviously the gun bill, probably first and foremost. One of the really important ones that he did sign was one that would uh, create an 11 percent tax on, on gun sales and ammunition to fund violence prevention programs. Um, there have been a lot of folks that were concerned he wouldn't sign it because he tends to be kind of tax averse as a governor. Um, but obviously, gun control and gun safety has been a big part of his platform. So I wasn't surprised personally mm -hmm. that he he signed that one. And he's also been signing some reproductive health bills, some labor bills. Uh, but yeah, there's still hundreds more awaiting his decision. Uh, the race for governor, uh, the election for governor is not going to be till 2026. Yet a few people are already announced among the latest. Tony Thurman, the school's chief. How come so many people are declaring so early here? Well, I think they're kind of afraid of losing out on the on the competition if they don't announce um, really quickly. I mean, we saw that, you know, months ago, Lieutenant Governor um, Eleni Kunalakis announced that she was running and she actually took a page out of uh, Gavin Newsom's playbook because when he was announcing his bid for governor, um, he announced super early in the cycles to kind of, I guess, feel like he could have more more dominance over the field, get an early start for fundraising, name recognition, all of those things. And so I think more and more people are throwing their hats in the ring. With Tony Thurmond, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting because my impression is that a lot of people, you know, don't really know his name. And those that do might have somewhat of a, you know, mixed perception of, of how he's been handling his job as school's chief. Obviously, during the pandemic, there was a lot of anger about school closures and school policies that, you know, didn't always match those around the nation. And we've seen the effects with significant learning loss um, among California's kids and just, you know, incredibly low scores um, on math and reading for many elementary and high school students. So um, he's definitely going to have a lot of defending of his record to do um, as he seeks the highest state in California, the highest seat in California. Speaking of Governor Newsom, he is now formally going to debate uh, Ron DeSantis. It'll be November 30th in Georgia on Fox News. Is this still a thing that people want to see um, in your in your opinion? It's funny because, you know, the, um, Newsom this week said at um, the, the Republican uh, debate that we had um, down in Simi Valley um, that he thinks it's ridiculous that um, DeSantis actually agreed to debate him um, because he's like here that that's really a sign that DeSantis's uh, presidential campaign is flopping because he's agreed to debate a guy himself that isn't even running for president. Um, and so, yeah, I don't really know what the appetite for this is going to be because, you know, it, Newsom obviously has been out um, trying to be like the, the Democratic attack dog uh, for the party. But yeah, DeSantis kind of at this point doesn't really seem to be a super big draw um, among Republicans and his, you know, his approval numbers are, are pretty low and, and his ratings for potentially being president. People, he's not the front runner by, by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, I think it will kind of be mm -hmm. interesting to watch. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what the market for it is. <laughs> yeah, Gavin Newsom will say some things so Joe Biden doesn't have to. Perhaps it's just taking the party line at this point. Emily, good to see you. Thank you as always. If you'd like to reach out to Emily, you can do so at emily.hoven at sfchronicle.com.